All right. I hope my audio is a bit louder than before. I realized over the past few, like last stream in particular, it was pretty quiet. So just tell me how it goes. Yeah, so I'm not sure what I'm going to stream today. So we're going to spin the wheel. Please no, 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 please no. It's time for your weekly programming stream. Yes, honey. My webcam's not attached. I'm not showing anyone my dead face. Why don't we why don't we have a try over? Why don't we have a try over? Yeah, we'll have to do like two out of three, I guess. I'm not sure. Gaming, 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 gaming. Gaming. And then I guess you have to do a third time. Why is it? Why is it Christmas colors? Do you know what time of year it even is? Sorry, wrong. Why did I spin it three times? <gasps> okay. All right. Why did I even make this damn wheel? All right, let me set the Twitch cam. No, we're gonna, we're gonna do what the wheel says. Otherwise there's no point in having the wheel, is there? Or we could just ignore the wheel. I mean, we don't know this wheel is fair, do we? We haven't looked at the source code. Like, how do we know that it's, it's like not spying on me and setting it to be what this is? We just don't know. There's no way to know. Okay, uh, let's try a different website, random.org. We'll go to, yeah, we'll go to random.org. Uh, we'll try coin flipper. Um, Heads, uh, one the coin, heads, game, tails, programming. Ah, uh, I trust this. I trust this. Okay. Hey, PG. We're about to play game. The coin says so. You know, I had a bad feeling about that wheel after all. How you doing, PG? Shouldn't you be at school or... I don't know, what time is it in America? Um, so we're gonna have to find a game. Um, the one I was thinking of... All right, have fun cleaning your room. Just live in trash like me. It's much more efficient. Like, I'm, my desk is covered in trash. It's the only way to live. All right, so we're going to play some cultural awareness. Oh, shit. Uh, that's how you was living? 
Why did I say what? You can't live that like, why not? Uh, is it people? Are they stopping you? Is it some false sense of dignity? Okay, so this is the game, I think. Licensed shareware. I think the one that I have is a demo. I can play it online in the browser. Let's just do that, I guess. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's set the difficulty to, yeah, I'm a novice. Um, and let's begin the game. Please enter your name. Uh, Yukia, yeah, that's my name. Yes, I did enter it correctly. Okay. Um, please enter a one line description of the metric system. Um, okay, yeah. Um, metric system is, um, okay, so units divisible by, by powers of 10. Oh, more information. We got the happy faces in the bottom left though. Um, it uses prefixes such as Senti, um, Megi, Mega, no, I think, maybe Senti, shit, okay, I know, okay, Senti, Senti, please type in more about the subject, what is there to be more, there's nothing more, um, when was it made, when was it made, um, it was made in the 1800s, probably. Please try again. Um, okay. 2002? I don't, it was not made in 2002. What's wrong with you? Um, last chance for 25 points. Uh, what, what, what more can you say about it? It's just a sister. It, it, it it's a measurement of units. I don't seem to be familiar with the above concept. Metric system. The system of weights and measures used by scientists and people in most of the world except the US. Different units are related to each other by powers of 10. The basic units of length and mass are the meter and the kilogram respectively. There's more units than that. What the heck? What's the issue? I don't know. I, did I not get this right? Okay, let's continue. Magic carpet. Please enter a one line description of the above concept. It's a carpet that is enchanted to fly. Um, it was in the film. Was Aladdin out when this game was made? Okay, it says I'm familiar. Magic carpets appear in Middle Eastern stories, such as the Arabian Nights. They can fly and carry people wherever they wish to go. Can they carry other things than people? Probably not. Hey Manny, what's up? I'm playing cultural awareness so I get more good at culture. Russian Revolution. Oh shit. When was this? When was this game made? Was this before the fall of the war? Um, Lenin? Bolshevik? Uh, money? 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 Manny? Money? Look. I can't. Why is there a space between mon and e? I suppose not to say moan. Okay, money then. Did I say it right? Um, I guess the Russian Revolution was... Um, 
uh, I guess it was the start of communism, but I don't know. Um, the start of communism in the... <laughs> Start of communism. You like my accent? Thank you. Red October. It was the start of communism in Russia. More information. Um, it happened in the 1900s, probably. More stuff on the subject. It was due to, it was based, it was the workers revolution. I'm just going to put a question mark there. How am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. Decided I have a quick stream. I was going to say scream. What more? Um, there was a war. I'm not familiar with it. Misconduct of World War One and the riots forced Tsar Nicholas II, the Russian monarch, to abdicate in March 1917. Provisional government was weak, lacked popular support. In November, Bolsheviks under Lenin overthrew the government, formed Soviet Union. Please enter a one-line description of opera. Um, it's a type of play. No, it's a type of singing. Um, usually it involves long notes. <laughs> I'm out of ideas. Um, uh, I don't know much about opera. Usually involves long notes. That's what I said. I wrote that. Um, if I was explaining opera to someone that didn't know what opera was, uh, it's a form, uh, a form of music. Please try again. My last chance. Uh, I'm crying. This is your last chance for 25 points. I don't know. All I can, is there a phantom in it? There's a phantom. I'm not, I'm not familiar with opera. You're not familiar with opera. All right, a stage drama where the dialogue is mostly or totally sung by orchestral accompaniment. Accompaniment, accompaniment. I can't read a word that's split across lines like this. I'm sorry. Accomp, animate, anim, accompaniment. Oh no, I can't actually say the word. A compliment. Oh, I just can't speak English. That's not the game's fault. Famous operas include uh, Ida, Carmen, Don Giovanni, The Magic Flute. Famous composers include Mozart, Verdi, Puccini, and Wagner. Short story. Um, what, it's a story that's shorter than, a, mo, shorter than a novel. Okay. Um, usually it explores a single concept. Um, there's no, they are singular. It's a short story. It's fiction. No, it's not. Well, it is fiction. It's a story. Although you seem quite familiar with the above concept, it took you quite a while to express yourself. Please take a few seconds to review what I have in my database. God damn it. A brief work on narrative prose fiction, shorter than a novel, established as a modern art form in the 1800s by Edgar Allan Poe. A short story has only a few characters, may concentrate on mood rather than plot, and aims for unity of effect. That's pretty interesting. Apollo program. Um, <laughs> I've got this. Series of missions to send manned spacecraft 
to the moon. Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! Hole in one. Good. You do seem familiar with the above concept. Here is what I have in my database about this subject. NASA space program during the 1960s to 1970s designed to put a person on the moon. In 1969, during the Apollo 6 mission? No. Shit. 11 mission. Apollo 11. Just write 11. Don't write numerals. Roman numerals. Just write 11. Neil Armstrong became the first person to step out on the moon's surface. Yep, that seems about right. Europe. Oh, shit. Um, Europe is a union of countries in the... Does it mean like the, the place Europe or Europe, Europe in, such as Germany? Shit. Was Germany part of Europe before? <laughs> such as West Germany and France. Um, hey, Johnny, what's up? They, sh they, sh they share a political... Um, not gender. They share a framework for a passing political um, directions. They have re common regulations and standards between countries. It consists of multiple countries, okay? I, there's nothing I can't tell you. I'm not familiar with Europe. You're not familiar with Europe. Okay, West Quarter of Eurasia considered as a separate continent. Division follows Ural MTS, Ural Mounts, Caspian Sea, Caucasus Mounts, Mountains, they mean mountains, Black Sea, includes France, Germany, Poland, Ukraine, Russia, Italy, Spain, Britain, rivers include Volga, Danube, Rhine and Rhone. Was that Rhone? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Conjunction, grammar, oh. Um, a word joining, or is it, okay, conjunctions. That can mean things like and or or, I think. It's to join two statements, I think, but I'm not sure if they talk about like semicolons, colons, Hmm, I'm going to go with that it's like the and and or, a conjunction joining two or more grammatical statements. You need additional information. Uh, is there anything more? Words like or and and are used. Yes, I was correct. A conjunction is a word used to connect phrases, clauses, or entire sentences together. And, but, and or are coordinating conjunctions if, when, because, though, and as are examples of subordinating conjunctions. <laughs> I like this because this is the novice and I'm scared of what's in advance. I think my brain would fall over. Okay. Rudyard Kipling. Fuck. I don't know who this is. Rudyard Kipling? I... Mm, shit. Uh, is that a man's name? Jungle Book. Male character in the Jungle Book. Yeah. More information. Lived in India as a boy. Keep it coming, Kaz. We're almost there. Wow, Kaz isn't replying. Must be hanging me out to dry here. <laughs> English? <laughs> okay, that works. <laughs> Born in India, Kipling was an English author of the late 1800s, early 1900s. He wrote stories about India, including Kim, The Jungle Book, and Just So Stories. 
his poem F discusses how one must act to be a mature adult. That's pretty cool. Sedimentation geoscientists. Oh shit. Um, sedimentation. It comes from the Latin word sedimentation, meaning, I don't know, sediments. This is how sediments are formed. The formation of sediments. And it's in geos, so it's to do with rocks, I guess, between rocks. Okay, that didn't get me too many smileys. Sand in the ocean. Um... No, I'm ocean floor. No, no, you listen here, okay? I know what this is. You're making me look stupid on stream. Um, it's nothing wrong with being stupid, but I don't know. I need additional information. Um, so it'd be, I guess it would be sedimentation is the formation of layers of various things of various types of sediment. So like, it, it sounds like that thing that forms the layers of the earth, you know, I don't know how that works. How does, how is there layers of earth? Where are the layers coming from? Who knows? Is there a conspiracy here? Scientists want us to believe in plate tectonics, but where do the sediments come from? Where do the layers come from? We just don't know. Meteorites? You're breaking up. I can't hear you. Uh, okay. Um, sedimentation. I don't know. I don't know anything else. Meteorites. Oh, you mean meteorites. It contains meteorites. Nope. Um, it contains rocks. You don't seem to be very familiar. The process whereby rock forming materials are deposited after being transported from other locations by the action of wind, water, or ice. The sediments accumulate to form layers of mud, gravel, and other debris. Okay. Yeah. Kind of, not at all, completely off. Harmony, music, um, notes that share the same key and rhythm. Oh, I just pulled that one out of nowhere and I got almost all the happy faces. Um, when the music goes good, when the music goes good. Nope, that got zero. Um, composition with multiple instruments. Um, Jukes music percent. I don't know. Uh, please type in some more. I don't know. I don't want to forfeit it because then I'm going to get lazy and I'll miss out on the points. Please try again. This is your last chance. So harmony. I don't know what a harmony is. Um, multiple instruments. In music, harmony means the pleasing combination of two or more musical notes played together to make a chord. Okay. Yep. Leonardo da Vinci. All right man who lived in Paris and took people apart. Nothing. Am I thinking of someone else? Am I thinking of like Michelangelo? <laughs> Maybe I faced it wrong. Um, didn't he take people? A bitch? He's not a bitch, I don't think. Um, Mona Lisa? Italian? Who am I thinking of? <laughs> Alright, he wrote them he made the Mona Lisa. Who was the who was the guy who did the, the dissection of humans? He had the he had the corpses and stuff. He's an Italian painter? Yeah, that's almost it. 
an inventor? What did he invent? That was Obama. No, it wasn't Obama. Freud? No. No, hang on a second. Harry Parsons. <laughs> uh, Leon uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci. Yeah, he was a polymath. Uh, didn't he take people apart? Um, body. What? <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci. Um, human anatomy. He studied the anatomy. That's the way you say it. He cut up more than 30 corpses. See, I told you. No, we're going to go back here. Please. No, you, you got my point. I go full screen again. Well, then anatomist, whatever that is. There, we got it. He was an artist, a sculptor, an architect, an engineer, a scientist. He lived in the late 1400s to early 1500s during the Renaissance. Famous paintings include The Last Supper and The Mona Lisa. His notebooks include designs for flying machines, parachute. What are you getting mad at me for? He, I didn't dissect these people. They were... I did not. I did not dissect people. Is this peaking? Oh, I hope not. Okay. Please enter a one line description of the above concept for a hundred points. Hang on. Let me just check if my audio is peaking. Peak. No, it doesn't seem like it. Bunch of fucking bears and penguins at the South Pole. <laughs> Bethesda is playing Doom Eternal later. Yeah. Um, South Pole. The magnetic uh, pole at the south of the Earth contains ice sheets known as Antarctica. I don't know, did people even like the South Pole back then? I know in the 1800s, everyone was excited about the North Pole. Or was it the South Pole? Pretty sure it was the North Pole. The South Pole was not a jungle, I don't think. Oh shit, it has penguins. Southernmost point of the Earth's axis at 90 degrees south latitude in the Antarctic. First explorer to reach the South Pole was Roald Amundsen of Norway in 1911. Richard Bride of the US explored the South Pole by airplane. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> Does it count if someone goes to the North Pole by ship and then you're like, but our boy from the US, he, he flew over it. He peeked out his window. I mean, it's probably, an, it's an achievement still, but like, you know, you got to land at least. Did he land? How would you land on the, on ice? Planes don't like ice, do they? Whatever. I'm thinking too much. The devil. Uh, uh, bat, uh, okay. Devil. I, I can't write character from book. Satan book of job. Um, the devil, also known as Satan, a fallen angel, um, tempted Adam and Eve. Got it. In Christian belief, the devil is the enemy of God, the tempter of man, the source of evil in the universe. Once the angel Lucifer, he fell from grace to become Satan, the ruler of hell, often pictured with horns, tails, Hooves. Touch and go. Um. Sounds illegal. Touch and go. Is that a term as in. 
I would not be a cute red goat man. What is touch and go? I need to phone chat because I have no idea. Is this a term? Is this a restaurant in America? Is it like a, is it a pog thing? What is it? The medical definition of someone in critical condition. <laughs> Medical definition of someone in a critical condition. A pog thing. Nope, it's neither of these. We've ruled out two things what it could be. And there's just infinite more things that it might be. Um, restaurant competitor of McDonald's. No, it's not that. We ruled that out. You thought touch and go was when someone was dying? I don't think, I don't think it was that. A crime? That's right, we could say it's a crime. Oh, okay. A touch and go situation is whose outcome is precarious and uncertain. My uncle had a heart attack and the doctor says things are going to be touch and go for several days. Okay. All right, well, we tried. George Washington, this guy. All right. He is on the dollar bill. Man from the dollar bill. <laughs> Man from the mountain. Ah. Uh. I think most of them did. Not saying it's right or anything, but I don't think... I think this game does not... Probably does not gloss on that. Wooden teeth. And what, what, he invented electricity. That's right. Yes, the apple tree fell on him and he knew about the electricity. He invented the Apple computer. Okay. Commander in chief of the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War against enormous odds prevailed over the British. Later become the president of the United States. Greatly honored is called the father of his country. That's, uh, that's what he's known for. Definitely. Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, I remember this. The lion's den is a term used to describe being uh, in a space with enemies. No, it's none of that actually. It's a book. It's not a book. It's Bible? Bible. No, it's not. Last chance for 25 points. Um, I don't know. It has Daniel. Can we write his name, Daniel, to get some points? No. Old Testament, Daniel, an official in King Darius' court, was faithful to his Hebrew god. Darius once decreed that prayers be directed only to the king. Daniel disobeyed, was thrown in a den of lions, but was saved by God's angel. That's pretty cool, I guess. I recall we had this question last time and I got it just as wrong. El Salvador. El Salvador. Uh, Bitcoin. Lots and lots of Bitcoin. I, guess. I don't know about... This game was made before, basically... I don't know. I know there's history, but, like, this game was made pre-9-11, pre-global financial crisis, pre-COVID, pre-whatever war is going on right now. Is there anything that even, like, I could even, have I even been exposed to anything? 
Did it have a dictator? War between communists? Oh. Dictator. Big dick. <laughs> no. A big dictator. That's what I meant to say. Um. <sighs> big. No. Big dictator. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's in, uh, shit. Where is it? Is it in, it's not in, is it in Europe? It's in Europe. No. It's in the Middle East. Central America? What's it doing there? That's where the freedom is. Okay. Spanish speaking country in Central America, bordering Guatemala and Honduras. Cities, San Salvador. It tried, okay. But I... I feel bad because that's the only rendition of this country's anthem I've ever heard in my life. So, whenever I think of El Salvador, I'm gonna associate it with this game. <laughs> San Salvador, Santa Anta, mountainous terrain, a tropical climate modified by the elevation. Civil war has disrupted much of the economy. Yes, civil war is bad for the economy in general. Um... Mother Teresa, um, Catholic saint that worked at a hospital as a nurse, maybe? I mean, that's probably not the case. Maybe she was protestant, protestant saint that visited hospitals to preach. Republicans want a good economy, but they want a civil war, kind of sus. Yeah. They want the war economy. Um, what did Mother Teresa do? I, I once read a conspiracy website. Was it Mother Teresa? No, it was for some Catholic sister where they had a conspiracy that the person was replaced. I don't know if they're still popular these conspiracies, they probably are. I don't read many conspiracies anymore, but there's always like a conspiracy that someone's being replaced and they like always take photos, like different photos from different people and places and uh, how the person has changed and they have different opinions, things like that. Um, but it was a pretty good one. Probably my favorite conspiracy um hang on a second i need to let me see if i can find this did i know avril levine was replaced okay we have to find andrew wk all right this dude there's, an, there's a theory that he doesn't exist okay that's probably not it um, but if we search up Andrew WK conspiracy, I don't know if I'll even find, find this. Um, I, I'm just going to just check these two links. Maybe it'll have something. This is way too much. This wasn't, this wasn't the website. There's too much here. I can't. Um, but basically, I once, I once um, read a website about this, and something about Steve Mike or something. But 
it was absolutely off the rails. Is this it? This could be it. It could be, I don't know. Um, there was a lot of stuff. It's a, it's a rabbit hole. Anyway, so I went to this website that... God, I have to, sorry, I have to close that because I'm just going to get distracted. I went to a website that was all down the rabbit hole about this Andrew WK guy. And it was all the way down. You would not believe it. It went so... It went so much down the rabbit hole that it was pointing to, like, things on different websites as, like, codes. Um... Like, you know how people look for codes in places where there's no codes? Well, they looked for a code on a website, though, that was actually code. There was a bash script. Um, and the bash script contained a call to orc, A-W-K. <laughs> and they were just mental about this this script, this random script they found on the internet that used orc, thinking that it was related to Andrew WK. <laughs> I loved it. It was great. Uh, okay. Mother Teresa. Um, was she a saint? She was a sister. Um, Cass... Catholic sister. No, she was a mother. No, she probably wasn't a mother. Nun, that's the word. Nun. Roman Catholic nun born in Yugoslavia. She received a Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her humanitarian work in aiding, aiding in India, aiding lepers and the dying of poor, the poor of Calcutta. I'm sure there was, like, I remember there being controversy around that. People being like, why didn't she do more or Whatever, I don't know. So, I don't know. Obama got a peace prize, so they practically throw those out, right? Um, don't look a gift horse proverb in the mouth. Oh, it just wanted me to complete it. It didn't want me to explain what it was because I wouldn't have been able to do that. I'm not actually going to look at the explanation right now. I'm staring at my keyboard trying to think of what I would have actually put. Um, don't look at gift horse in the mouth. Probably means something along the lines of um, if someone gives you a gift, don't, don't try and figure out how crappy it is. Just accept it. All right. It says if you don't look at gift horse in the mouse, if you, mouth, if you get something for free, don't complain if it doesn't quite meet your standards. This saying comes from the old practice of judging a horse's age by looking at its teeth. Okay, so that's close enough, I think. Lebanon. That's a country, I think. No. Uh, Lebanon. It sounds like a country but it also sounds like a, a cultural practice. Like maybe it's a day or something. Day of cultural practice. Nope. Middle East. All right. So it's a country in the Middle East. Hey, Kogamer, what's up? Um, country in the Middle East. It's named Lebanon and it's in the Middle East. What else is there? Please. <laughs> I'm out of ideas. Um, it's in the Middle East. It's east of the middle. West of Europe. Okay, I'm not familiar with it. Arabic speaking nation in southwest in Southwest Asia. Middle East. Um, borders Israel, Syria and Mediterranean Sea.
borders Israel, Syria, and Mediterranean Sea cities. Birat, Tripoli. Country has been torn by fighting between PLO, Syrian, and Israel forces, as well as between Muslims and Christians. <laughs> Muslims spelt with an O. Um, this was before the war on terror, I suppose. Land of Nod. Oh, 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 that's a term expression. Um, expression for, no, wait, it's a euphemism, euphemism for, um, sleeping. Got it. First try. If someone is in the land of Nod, that means that he or she is asleep. Bob over there in the corner looks like he's awake, but he really is in the land of Nod. What the fuck? What? Bob it looks like he's awake, but he's really asleep? How does that work? Huh? Whatever, move past it. Thailand. Enter a one-line description of the above concept for 100 points. Um, so Thailand is... You thought the word euphemism was spelt with an E, not an A? Probably. Don't... This doesn't have spell check. Um, and I don't have spell check. I'm a programmer. I don't type English most of the time. Please enter a one-line description of the above concept for 100 points. Southern Asia. D Thailand, that's near Vietnam, isn't it? Uh, country near Vietnam. Um, I don't know much about it. I know that it's near Vietnam, I, I guess. Um, I know all the terrible stereotypes about it, but I kind of like, I don't want to reinforce them. Um, there's probably a war going on there. War. Yeah, we got that. It's always a, there's always a war going near some country. <laughs> Um, don't worry. We can figure out. There's always a war. Thigh stereotypes? Don't know them. Yeah. Good. Um, there's a war. Um, there's probably rich culture. No. Um. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to hit enter. I'm... I'm going to curry. Okay. You don't seem to be familiar with, is it going to play the anthem? I'm just going to wait to see if it plays the anthem. It sounded kind of like the U.S. Uh, not, not the U.S. anthem. One of the songs, "Star Spangled Banner." I don't know. Okay, so Thailand is a nation in Southeast Asia, borders Myanmar, Laos, Malaysia, Cambodia, Pacific Ocean. So, doesn't seem to be anywhere near Vietnam. Maybe. Hey, Aria, what's up? Cities: Bangkok, Thunburi, tropical monsoon climate. Formerly called Siam, constitutional monarchy dominated by military, Buddhism, main religion. So that kind of sounds like Australia. I should go to Thailand. 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 Working on that website, huh? Good. Um, feel free to just ask me random stuff. Um, you asked about how to set it up with a reverse proxy. Um, it's just HTML static files. You could probably put them on the proxy server. Come work in the pig farms in Thailand with you. 
Sure. Combustion. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess that this means the engineering concept. So, um, ignition of a fuel designed to release energy and drive machinery. Nope, not, not at all. Okay. Explosions. Nope, not that at all. Um, does it mean like spont spontaneous human combustion? Spontaneous human combustion? Nope. Sp spaceships. <laughs> oh, wait, it could be used for like m rockets. Nope. Combustion means the act or process of burning a chemical oxidation reaction yielding heat and if rapid light as well. Slow controlled combustion takes place in our bodies. Rapid combustion occurs in a fire. Interesting. <laughs> it just plays the anthem for combustion. Um, so combustion, I guess, just means um, a process of burning chemical uh, oxidation. So it gives heat and maybe some light. It takes place in our body. Where? Where does it take place? Is it when I fart? <laughs> We're all slowly burning all the time. All right. The Raven. Oh, um, book by Edgar Allan Poe. Starring Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Uh, okay, so it's not talking about the movie. Um, what happened in The Raven? Um, I think it was a fight between two wizards. Duel between two wizards. No. Okay, not gonna lie. The only, uh, the only thing I'm going off here is my vague memories of the B movie starring Jack Nicholson that I watched once because my dad was over. Maybe like 10 years ago. I don't want to be a wizard. Um, quest. Stories probably have a quest. Oh, it's a poem. The poet mourning the loss of... Okay. A poem by Edgar Allan Poe. The poet mourning the loss of his loved one is visited by a mysterious raven who throughout the poem repeats, Nevermore. Okay. I'm not watching The Raven with you. Senor. Um, senor, I suppose. I'm not sure if senor means it's an honorific. Let's go for that. Honorific. Yep. Um, is, it, is it for a man? Um, honorific for a man. Oh, it's Spanish. It's, it's in Spanish. Um, male. Man. Okay. Senor is a Spanish title corresponding to the English sir or mister. Senora is a woman. What's senorita then? Is that just that song cause played and is stuck in my head? Okay, noun. Little woman. So is that senorita? <laughs> Little boy. <laughs> Little man. I think little man, I think, yeah, so senora is woman, so it'd be little man, which is hilarious because it's like just calling someone a little man. Like, I kind of just picture two things. I picture like Danny DeVito, but I also like imagine it as an insult being like, you little man. Senorita, I don't know. I think it's by Tita. It's, uh, 
Maybe it's that one. I don't know. I love it when you call me Senorita. I think it's the Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello song. Yeah, 2019. A cause described it, I think, is Chalga. I'm not playing music on stream. Yeah, Chalga. What? What's the problem? Noun. Um. Word. Chalga is a Bulgarian pop music. What's the issue? Um, noun. Noun is a word, is a naming word. Naming word for an object or person. Yes, we did it. A noun is a word denoting a person, place, thing, or idea. This is why you don't have ESL as friends. I don't know what ESL is. Examples are boy, water, cat, friendship, etc. A proper noun denotes a specific individual, place, etc. Examples of proper nouns are Stephen, Rover, Chicago. Yes. Little boy blue. Lost his sheep. I think that's what it was. Um, a boy who lost his sheep in a nursery rhyme. Okay. Full disclosure, I may have learnt all my nursery rhymes from Mixed Up Mother Goose. <laughs> so they're all around in my head mixed up. <laughs> that game was anti-educational, I think, for kids. Um, maybe we'll play it in a bit. Depends on uh, what we do. Uh, if we run out of this round. These rounds are so long. Please enter. Okay. So, Little Boy Blue. I don't think he lost his sheep. Little Boy Blue. It's a nursery rhyme. Uh, Mother Goose's nursery. Mother Goose. No. Did you like Senorita? That was a good song. I don't see why I wouldn't like it. I like Tita's Africa better. Um, it was definitely a bop, but it's a bop in the way that it gets, it's like you play it and you're like, oh, this song just kind of like, it's boring. But then like a day later, you're thinking of the song and you're like, what song is this? It's in my head. I don't know if that happens to everyone or just me, but that's how basically every song happens to me. I'm like, rarely do I see a song. I'm like, this is a good song. Um, I It usually just happens. It's like, I listen to it and I'm like, yeah, that's not a bad song. And then like a day later, my brain's like, hey, you know that song? We like it. And I'm like, okay, but I don't know what song it was. I don't know the name of the song. And it's like, well, here's some lyrics I remember. Maybe. Okay. So. God, that reminds me of like... So, I heard a song when I was like six. And for the past like 20 years, I've been trying to figure out what song it was. <laughs> Um, but it turns out it's the, it's a specific cover of a classic Welsh song, Molly Brannigan, or is it Scottish? But I don't know. And I listened to it again and I was like, you know, this song is not that good. It sounded better in my head. Okay, yeah, so I don't know much about Little Boy Blue. Let's just hit enter. Since you gave up on this question, let's take some time to review the concept. Nursery rhyme. 
Little boy blue, come blow your horn, the sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. But where is the boy who looks after the sheep? He's under a haystack, fast asleep. Okay, so this dude's slacking off. Relative humidity. Um, the temperature felt due to humidity. No. Relative humidity. Humidity adjusted to temperature. Um, ratio of water in the air. Okay, 100% got it. A measure of the water vapor content of the air compared with the maximum amount that the air can hold when saturated expressed in percent. A high relative humidity near 100% may feel sticky and muggy. Measured using a hygrometer. Neat. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Who, who is this? Who could this be? Uh, American child story author half of it so one of that's right um 1900s um popular book chicago nope American philosopher, essayist, essayist, and the poet of the 1800s, key figure in the transcendentalist movement, transcendentalist movement. His poem, Concord Hymn, about the first battle of the Revolutionary War, has the famous phrase, the shot heard around the world. I mean, I guess I got some credit for American. But given this game, that's like a pass, isn't it? That's like a free, a free one. Abolitionism. All right. Um, the political movement in America with the goal to abolish slavery. I think so. I don't know what else to write there. I don't know if it was said differently back then. 19th century American anti-slavery movement, an important factor which led to the Civil War. You mean it wasn't about states' rights? Important abolitionists included Harriet Tubman of the Underground Railroad, ex-slave Frederick Douglass, W.L. Garrison of the Liberator, etc., so, where's my boy John Brown? Where's... Where's... Uh, where's all the... Where's Lincoln? Where's... I mean, was Lincoln... I don't know if Lincoln was really on board. He seemed like he just wanted to... Appease people. I don't know. Hey, love. PG. You got here at it. Out of time. We're playing... Oh, ow. Congratulations, you have passed Chicken Little, 900 points in the list of all-time best cultural awareness players. Although we tend to remember Chicken Little only in a negative sense, the fact remains that when she was hit by an acorn, her first thought was to warn her fellow farmyard animals. She was in the middle of playing a cultural awareness game when the incident occurred, and in fact was enjoying the second highest score ever achieved by a bird. Indeed, she was within striking distance of breaking the avian record. She was tempted to ignore the acorn and to continue playing on, but her fear got the better of her. Had she set fear aside and continued to play, not only would she still be alive, but she might have achieved a better score than the Ravens' top of 995. 
Alas, never more. This bird died because she didn't play the game. Is this a threat? Okay, we're nearly done with this, I think. Problem, 87 squared equals what? You just gonna give me a math question like that? All right, hang on a second. Um, 87 squared, 87 times seven. So, okay, no, hang on, I got this. I watched a YouTube video the other day on how to do maths. So let's, do I have GIMP? Hang on, I, I can work this out by hand, probably. I don't think I have anything to draw, to draw it with. Okay, let's open. Okay, I'll, I'll install GIMP. 87 times 87, yeah. That's what, yeah. So we're gonna try and break that down. Welcome to, the second power is itself times itself, yeah. Um, seven, five, six, nine. You're a genius, PG, but I still want to do it by hand just to prove that I can do math. Okay. So let's see. Graphics. GIMP. Oh crap. I just realized I'm using a trackball. This is going to look extra weird. Um, and I'm already bored of this. So. Come on, no. What we're going to do is grab our paintbrush and zoom in and switch to the pencil tool. Make it a little smaller. So, 80, 80 <laughs> times Two, I guess that's one way to put it. No, it's not. It's 87 times 87. So the first thing we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to multiply seven by seven. So seven by seven, that's a uh, trackball percent. Um, it's more because I'm using my left hand. Uh, seven times seven, 49. All right, so we've got nine. So we're going to put nine up there. And then we're going to... No. What? Right, we put a nine over here. I don't know where it goes. But that's fine. Nine. G. Um... Eight times seven. That's just, that's just, wait, no, I forgot the 49. You know what? This is a bit too complicated. <laughs> All right. Okay. See, if I go slow, I can, I can write it. All right. So we'll just do what PG said. <laughs> Don't look at my handwriting. <laughs> All right. So the answer is seven, five, eight, nine. Your answer isn't that right, quite right or complete. Okay, so 87 squared is 87 times 87 equals seven, equals seven, five, eight, nine. Seven, five, six, nine. Oh, I did have my glasses on. Oh, it took me too long. 87 squared is 700, 7,569. 7, the small exponent of two above and to the right of the 87 means that 87 is to be multiplied by itself. 87 times 87. The expression of 87 squared is read aloud as 87 squared. Sick. Someone's messaging me, hang on a second. Okay, please enter a one line description of the above concept of an igloo. Um, a building built out of ice stones, ice bricks. 
Um, shit. I don't want to write Eskimo because that's like a slur, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I guess it would be in like North Pole. Fine, I'll write Eskimo. Um, Eskimo is build these. Uh, Pingu builds them too. Uh, please type in some more about the subject for 50 points. I guess it's round. It has a round shape. I don't know. Do people live in them? People live in them. No. An Eskimo house or hut. Dome shaped and built out of blocks of ice or hard packed snow. Eskimo is a name given by outsiders to the natives of the far northern regions of North America. They prefer calling themselves the Inuit. Yeah. Adjective. Oh, I got this one. Adjective is a word. <laughs> so confident. <laughs> Immediately blanking out on it. <laughs> um... It's a word, uh, it's a, it's a character word. It's a, uh, I'm trying to think back. Um, where it is, uh, it's a descriptive word. Used with a noun. No, cause funny is an adjective. I think. There's also like adverbs and stuff. Um, adjective. It's a... Char I have the word character word in it. So let's try character word. No, I just don't know. I gave up. An adjective is a part of speech that modifies nouns or pronouns. Examples, a red ball or a good man. Yep. That is, that makes sense. Great Lakes. Please enter a one line description of the above concept for a hundred points. Um, large lakes in America. Michigan. That's right. The Great Lakes of Michigan. Um, there's probably a dam nearby, right? Dam? No. Canada. That's right. I got everything wrong. <laughs> A chain of five large freshwater lakes in central North America between the US and Canada, including Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario. Cities on the Great Lakes include Chicago, Detroit, Buffalo, Cleveland, and Milwaukee. Those are all in America. I think. No. Not sure. If, I think Cleveland is in America. I don't know. Mount Rainier. Um, probably some awful mountain I don't ever want to think about again. Any mountain that has like a name like that. Um, mountain in the United States. No, it's not there. Washington State. Washington. Oh, I almost got it. What if I say like, uh, very tall? No, very short. <laughs> Mount Rainier, Mount Tacoma. Mount Tacoma, that's what it's called? I remember Tacoma a lot better. Is a peak in the west central Washington state. This peak of volcanic origin is the tallest peak of the Cascade Range. Glaciers flow down from its summit. Okay. Alternating current. Okay. Alternating current is a stream of electricity with a voltage that alternates between a positive and negative. I'll just write this. Okay, so it's not between positive and negative. 
Um, it's actually just like any kind of wave. Um, are you going to say like, oh, Thomas Edison? Oh, right. They might be meaning like the power type of AC. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. No, Tesla thought that was pretty cool to use it for a power distribution, but that's pretty, that's not exactly what it's about. W O Q, excuse me. Um, typo. Alternating current. So it's not direct current. Holy, holy shit. I just heard like dogs screaming outside. It's not even Saturday. Usually all the wild stuff that happens is on Saturdays. One hand typing. You may ask where your other hand is. Probably holding the phone or laptop or something. Um, please type in more about such... I don't know. I guess... I mean, it's not blocked by capacitors. So, not blocked by capacitors. Please try again. What more do you want? When was it discovered? I don't know. Alternating current is electrical current that regularly reverses direction. Yeah, I guess so. Most US homes receive, receive 60 cycle per second AC. The voltage of alternating current is easily changed with step up or step down transformers. Yes. Does AC specifically mean regularly reversing direction? Hmm. I don't know about that. Los Angeles. Um, city in America. Let's start there. Um, I think it's on the, the, the west of America. No. No, that's where, uh, <laughs> California. Yeah, largest city in California. Got it. I was thinking of, uh, not California. I was thinking of, oh, my brain. Okay, hang on. I'm, I was thinking of the, the West where they have, um, am I thinking of Los Angeles? I am, I think, maybe, Los Angeles, that's the one with lots of slopes, isn't it? I think so. Um, large city in Southern California, near the Pacific Ocean, important cultural and industrial center. Well publicized problems in its growth have been air pollution and water shortages. It pipes its water from Colorado, from the Colorado River 300 miles away. Big stinky water pipes. New Testament. Sequel to the Old Testament. Okay, that didn't pass at all. Um, biblical texts following the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, what else is in the New Testament? I guess it has letters from Paul. I don't know if they include that. Do they put those in the back of the book? Are they, like, important? <laughs> Musk and Bezos should figure out cheap desalination for something actually useful. Um, 
let's see. I don't know what else happens in the New Testament. It's selected biblical canon. Written by Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and someone else, probably. Nope, not that. I don't know. God's in it. Okay. The second part of the Christian Bible, consisting of the Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles and Apostles and Epistles and Revelation. It tells the story of Jesus' life and presents the history and various documents of the early church. So is the Catholic Church a fork, a branch of Christian? Or is Christianity just the word? Because I thought Christian was meant uh, protestant. Prevailing winds. Um, weather winds. Um, weather. W High speed weather. You have a burrito? Nice. Prevailing winds. I don't know. Um, maybe they mean like, you know, a concept. Okay. Yeah. It says concept. Concept prevailing winds. So that would mean like, um, societal change. No, nope. just any kind of, uh, new opinion. Nope. Um, popular ideas. Prevailing winds. Worldwide wind systems follow seasonal patterns, resulting in prevailing winds that tend to blow consistently in certain directions. Reversals can result in storms such as Asian monsoons. Local patterns include daily land and sea breezes. That makes sense. Concept. President of the United States. Leader of the military. Okay, thank goodness. I didn't want to lose our score. <laughs> Leader of the military division of the United States federal government. Okay. Uh, elected by people. Well, everyone's elected, aren't they? Nixon? Nixon. Wait, no. Uh, would this be made during the Clinton years? Clinton. Nixon. I don't know. The founding fathers. They were... Well, they weren't always the president. Uh, uh, George Washington. We knew. We know about him. Okay. Chief Executive Officer. Wait. Does that mean CEO of the U.S.? Okay. Is that where that expression came from? CEO of the United States, holder of the nation's highest elected position. He is the head of the executive branch of government. He, okay, and is the commander in chief of the armed forces. He may serve up to two four year terms. All right. Great Smoky Mountains. Large mountains that often have bushfires or brush fires. Nope, it's not it. Um, I don't know. Do you know? No, you don't know. No one knows. Um, Let's see. The clock is running. We're one and a half hours into the one hour clock this game set. West Virginia. West Virginia. Nope. United States. America. The Groat. 
The Great Smokies are part of the Appalachian mountain system on the border between North Carolina and Tennessee, named for the smoky haze that envelops them. Covered by a rich hardwood and red spruce forest, set aside as a national park. Yeah, you got, you got, no, you didn't get it. Okay. Jim Thorpe. Um, I vaguely know this name, but I don't know where in my brain this name is placed. I think the name is placed in U.S. Governors, possibly to do with Jim Crow laws. No, Jim Crow is named after a fictional character. Or not a character, a stereotype. Um, so that's not actually what I'm thinking. How cowardice is it to make like a law with a name that isn't yours, especially when it's something that's absolutely terrible? Like all the other laws, they're like, they have names of the people or the court cases based on them. But Jim Crow laws, it's like, you know what? We don't want our name on this. We don't want to be seen as absolute villains in history. Ugh. Disgusting. Okay. I don't know who Jim Thorpe is. Um, let's say US Senator. Nope. Um, I don't know. Catholic, Catholicism is the main branch of Christianity. It's basically the government's religion of Western Europe. Is it part of Western Europe still? <laughs> or did they, uh, did they recently Brexit from Western Europe? I don't know who Jim Thorpe is. I'm sorry. Native American athlete outstanding in multiple sports. Won pantalons and deca decathlons in 1912 Olympics. Stripped of medals upon discovery, he had played semi-pro semi -pro baseball. What? It, was, it okay, was it bad to play semi-pro baseball? And the Olympics at the same time? Medals restored? Sorry, am I missing something? Jim Thorpe. He had been paid for playing two seasons of semi-professional baseball before competing in the Olympics, thus violating the contemporary amateurism rules. What? So... What a reach. Yeah. Um, so in the eighties, they allowed professional athletes, sorry, nineties after the collapse of the Soviet union and its influence. So the Soviet union so the Soviet Union was like, hey, no professional athletes, but we're going to send in professional athletes, but they're not professional professional. Um, and then like they collapsed. Uh, running back. It's a pretty sick photo. 1915. Um, yeah, so I'm glad those medals got restored, but that must have really, really sucked. Poor guy. Damn, the Great Prof Great Depression ended his career. 
suffered from alcoholism. Damn. Let's be real though, this guy was white, he definitely would not have had that happen. Like, maybe you could say that it's like, oh, we're going to get rid of these medals, but like, there would have been outrage. I suppose there probably was outrage. I don't know. Holy land. Does this refer to Jerusalem? Israel. Jerusalem. Yep. What about Israel? Oh. Yeah, the, the two holy lands. No, Jerusalem is like a city in Israel, or was a city. -ly? According to the Bible, the region in the Middle East that God in repeated covenants promised to the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land of Canaan or Palestine, referred to as the promised land or Eretz, or Eretz. Yeah, that didn't go too well, did it, God? You kind of uh, fucked up there. A fool and his money, something, something about, can be easily parted. A fool and his money cannot be easily parted, I guess. I don't know, what's the proverb here? The clock's ticking. Palestine and Philistine are similar? I somehow doubt that. A fool and his money can be easily parted. A uh, fool and his money don't deserve money. I don't know. A fool and his money are soon parted. Are you kidding me? Foolish people don't save money, but spend it as soon as they receive it. They can easily be tricked into spending money on things that they don't need and can't afford. Wow, this is the problem of foolish people, definitely. That's the problem here. Oh, uh, little classes here, yeah. Please enter a one-line description of the above concept for 100 points. Didn't we already get Apollo? Or are they talking about the... Greek god. Yeah, Greek god Apollo. Um, I guess representing the moon. Uh, Luna? I don't know. I'm not up to scratch on my Greek god stuff. The sun? <laughs> Greek... <laughs> the sun. Yeah. NASA's going to fly their Apollo mission to the sun. The first man to step on the sun. Smash mouth. Okay, Greek god, second only to Zeus. He was the god of the sun, archery, and agriculture. Well, you know what? I'm going to eat all my words because apparently you are correct. So, NASA just named the Apollo mission where they go to the moon after going to the sun. Neat. He was the god of the sun, archery, agriculture, poetry, medicine, and so forth. As god of prophecy, he spoke through the Delphic Oracle at his shrine into the city of Delphi. <laughs> do you think, like, do you think, like, the first sketches of the Apollo mission were just, like, some guy going, you know what, we can probably make it to the sun. The Soviets are going to go to the moon, so let's try going to the sun. And then someone just walked up behind him and said, are you an actual... Are you an actual moron? You can't go to the sun. And just crossed out the picture of the sun and circled the moon. Hibernation. Um, biological process uh, in which mammals uh, slow metabolism over winter. Almost. Almost. Okay, I'll put bears. Bears. Good. Many warm-blooded animals sleep during the winter to conserve energy. Hibernating animals include bears, skunks, chipmunks, bats, mice, hedgehogs, dormice, hummingbirds, and squirrels. Neat. 
Mary, New Testament. Mary, wife of Joseph, uh, mother of Jesus Christ, virgin, apparently. Yeah, we did it. Christians referred to the mother of Jesus as the Virgin Mary, since according to the Gospels, Jesus' birth was a result of miraculous conception. She is especially honoured by Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Christians. See, I kind of don't feel like that happened. Like, how would that work? I'm just saying, from an engineering perspective, no, it's not God's semen. Don't say that. Don't ever say that in my chat again. Um, <laughs> that's horrible. We're going to move on. Lake Ontario. Uh, lake in Ontario. Uh, Colorado. Mary was both the mother and the father. See, I'm out of time. It didn't tell me what it was. My score in this game was 1350. And I am basically almost last on the scoreboard. Pathetic. Uh, sixth grade essential knowledge. Um, okay. Let's, let's escape this. Absolute horrible. Um, there's also IQ challenge. There's other trivia games. Scripture quest. Let's just click scripture quest. <laughs> According to Hebrews 12, no man shall see the Lord without this holiness, faith, love, all of the above. I, I can't do another quiz. I'm just drained. Um, Time Traveler. You'll be tested on your history of American knowledge. I don't want American history. I don't, I don't want this. Okay. Um, let's just look at whatever these are. Oh, hang band. Do shoot him up. No. Um, I think I might be out of out of time. I'm not too sure. And let's let's go random game. At the logic game. Computer trivia quiz. Oh. Oh. Oh, let's try this then. 1991. Are you were granted to try before you buy? Shareware, shoestring software, PO box, whatever. Number of players, one. Player one, enter your name, Duke, yeah. All right, we're gonna start, oh, let's check the options first. Oh, shit. Music, yes, sound, yes, nice comments, yes. Caustic comments, yes. Display correct answer, limit time per question, second per question. Let's just go like that. I'm not sure if the volume is gonna be really, really loud, so just, Complain to me if that's the issue. Uh, escape. 
Okay. F1. Which of the following is the name of a programming language? Cotran, CPM, Apt, Bool, or So? I think it's probably Cotran. Sorry, that's wrong. All right. Let's examine, examine the evolution of DBase 4. Select the incorrect answer. DBase 2 does, did not evolve from a program called DBase. DBase 2 evolved from DBase. DBase 3 plus evolved from... What the fuck is this question? What is DBase? I mean, I've heard of DBase, but... Okay. There was no DBase I. Well, that doesn't affect the first two logic questions. You've already been filtered from this trivia. <laughs> DBase 3 evolved from DBase 2. Let's just say that. Okay, that was wrong. Complete the sentence. The first large-scale general-purpose electronic digital computer was built um, in Germany by Konrad Zeus or in... All right, so we're going with either Zeus or the Univac. I think it would be the Univac, right? John von Neumann. Um, uh, I think 46... No, 44 would be the bomb, wouldn't it? Not sure about 46. The US Navy would only really build like shit to calculate bombs. So I think it would be either Zeus or the Univac. And I think the Univac was more popular and it was American. So let's go with E. Sorry, that's wrong. Let's see the hint. Dr. John Markey and J. Presper Eckert worked at the School of Moore of Engineering, Moore School of Engineering, switched on the per first general purpose, whatever. It was the ENIAC. Oh, okay. Complete the sentence. The first large scale general purpose electronic digital computer was built. I guess. All right, so the first, the A and B questions just kind of, they don't give me the actual names. I guess that's trashy. I guess it would be A. Yeah. Back in 1980, there was another candidate besides Microsoft for the development of an operating system for the IBM PC. This person never had one class of computer training in his life, really isn't a person, but was MicroPro, the company that ended up producing the WordStar processor program is named Paul, Al Paul Allen, owns a company that competes against Microsoft with a product called DRDOS, has done well despite not being IBM's choice by getting into the multimedia business. What are these answers? What? So not only do I have to know who this person is, I have to know everything about this person. All right, so 1980. I'm pretty sure it was, shit, was it Paul Allen? I'm pretty sure it was the CPM guys, which I think was Diados, later Diados. This is worse than you thought. Okay. Yeah, it was the Diados. Let's see the hint. Yes, Gary, Ki Gary killed all. He made CPM. Um, yeah, so let's, I don't, I have so much to read, um, but I'm going to anyway. Gary Kildall programmed the first widely successful microcomputer operating system, CPM. Since he was notable in the microcomputer field, some stories have that IBM considered his company digital research in addition to Microsoft for the pers for the programming of the operating system for its new IBM personal computer. Some stories state that Kildall got cocky and went flying instead of meeting with IBM and therefore lost the contract. 
who knows if it's true or not? Why would you write it then? Now his company is pushing. <laughs> okay, present day. Now his company is pushing DRDOS, an MS-DOS compatible operating system with some distinct advantages over the MS-DOS version. Kildor was a professor before he was a software company president. Kildor has his PhD in computer science. Ed Roberts' company, MIT, built the Altair. Bill Gates and Paul Allen programmed a basic interpreter for that machine before they formed Microsoft. Yeah. So, yeah, so the MIT's Altair, super cool computer. I wish I, like, had one. Maybe there's an emulator. All right, back in, okay, so did we just already do that? We already did that one, I think, okay. Complete the sentence. Remington Rand seriously ended the computer market when they acquired funding to work on development of the Mark I computer, merged with the Boros Adding Machine Company, it became the Boros Corporation in this move, merged with Sperry Gyro Corporation to form Sperry Rand, acquired engineering research associates in 1952, invented the Winchester disc, Okay, what would... So, Remington ran... Remington Rand. Uh, do they make Remington rifles? Would you buy this game and share it with your friends? Maybe with my enemies. Hmm. Did the Boros adding machine even go anywhere? I vaguely remember reading about it when I was doing research for memory security. Um, let's, can we look at a hint? When Remington Rand purchased the Eckert Multi Computer Corporation in 1950 and in 1952 acquired the Engineering Research Associates, they were often running in the computer business. The consolidation of Remington Rand with Sperry would not happen until 1955. Harvard got funding from IBM to produce the Mark I computer. No mergers with Burroughs happened during these early days. Magnetic core memory and the Winchester disk were developed at IBM. By the way, the proper name is the Eckert Multi Computer Corporation, not the Eckert Multi Corporation. So it's given me the answer somewhere here, but I've forgotten the question. I think it was something like Remington ran, purchased the Eckert Mulchie Computer Corporation. Okay, so I, I, I think it's D. Remember the hint, and you'll know the answer next time. I am pathetic. Complete the sentence. The analytical engine was displayed at London Science Museum when Babbage was in his 70s. It was designed to calculate artillery tables. It was designed to calculate navigational tables. It is on display at the Smithsonian. It was conceived as a programmable general purpose automatic, com automatic computing machine. Probably E. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, I'm not going to go through the story of uh, the analytical engine. Complete the sentence. The PDP-1 was introduced in 1963, or more specific... <laughs> what the fuck is this? Complete the sentence. The PDP-1, or more specifically, the PDP-1's architecture was influenced by Ken Olson's experience designing the Bismack computer. It stands for Pipeline Digital Processor Number 1. It was the first computer offered by Ken Olson's Digital Equipment Corporation. It was the first microprogrammed processor. Oh, I don't know any of this. Um, this is too advanced. <laughs> oh no. Um, the PDP-1, so the Unix was on the PDP-11. And I think DEC did the PDP, so... I'm gonna do D. I'm correct! Select a co-inventor of the integrated circuit. Uh, Bruce Fairchild, George Stiblitz, Jack Kilby, Gordon Moore, Masatoshi Shima. 
I think it was E? Maybe you'll get it right next time. Well, what, what was it then? Robert Noyce, Robert R. Noyce of Fairchild Semiconductor and Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments co-invented the integrated IC in 1959. Uh, Dr. William Shockley invented the transistor with Dr. William Bratlin and Dr. John Barden. Without their discovery, the IC would not have been possible. Gordon Moore is well known as co-founder with Robert Noyce of Intel Corporation. George Stibitz built five relay-based computers at Bell Laboratories in the 1940s. Bruce Fairchild is a made-up name. Okay. Anne Wang founded Wang Laboratories and, and Masatoshi Shima worked on the design of the Intel 8080 and the Zilog Z80. He's the founder of Zilog. <laughs> 8080 when written as letters is ho-ho as in Santa. Damn. That's a pretty good um, timeline here, I guess. So the transistor is pretty good, but then you want to be able to like put a bunch of them in a single place. So it would have been George Stibitz, I think. I think so. Or Jack Kilby. I already forgot. Let's continue. The arithmetic logic unit is an essential component of the microprocessor. Select another. The input output bus, the peripheral processor unit, the control unit, direct memory access, random access memory. Okay. <laughs> it kind of seems like you need all these things for a microprocessor. <laughs> um... Uh, you kind of need I.O. for a computer to be useful, but I suppose not. You could just have memory mapped stuff. Maybe. Control unit is kind of vague. Peripheral processor unit, we probably don't need that. DMA, definitely not. I think it'd be E, random access memory. That's wrong. Oh shit, it's not part of the processor. It would probably be um, the input output bus then. Shit, why did I... Uh, why did I read microprocessor wrong? Okay, let's see the hint. A modern microprocessor resides on a teensy little silicon chip. Although many computer hardware items can be designed and built into the chip, only the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, and the registers are necessary. The direct memory access and the random memory access, the DMA and the random access memory can be part of the microprocessor, microprocessor, but they can also be external to it. A digital signal processor is a type of microprocessor. The video graphics adapter is on a card external to the microprocessor's motherboard. The peripheral processor and the, and the IO bus are external to the microprocessor. What? The peripheral processor and the input output bus are external. To All right, hang on a second. Right, this is written in the the nineties when it wasn't all integrated. Oh shit! Okay, I realized where I messed up. So the I/O bus is not the I/O port. It's an actual bus that has other stuff on it, and that was split out into another chip. Um, the peripheral processor unit, definitely not. DMA, no. Random access, no. Control unit. What is a control unit? Hang on a second. We have to figure this out. Um, microprocessor control unit. Yeah, it's it probably includes... It's probably the stuff that includes like the reset lines and logic. Oh, the control unit is the right. It's the it's the thing that handles fetching and stuff. Right. Well, today I learned. 
I think if Coz was here, he'd be raging. Complete this sentence. The introductory TV advertisements for the Apple Macintosh took its theme from George Orwell's 1984, featured animal characters blindly following a pig named Napoleon, was awarded a Clio for cinema and direction in 1983, actually showed a Lisa model computer because the prototype of the Macintosh was not complete during filming, featured Alan Alder in the cast for MASH. D. Are you sure? I don't think so. Um, so, I don't think Apple were in a good financial situation around this time. I think the Lisa didn't sell very well. The Macintosh, that would have come after the Apple II and whatever. So the Macintosh was like an actual computer. I think it might have been A. It's definitely not B. Was awarded a Clio for cinema and direction. Mm, I don't know that. The cast from MASH, probably not. It, it could be A, C or D. I... I, I think it probably is A. But I can't think of an ad for the Macintosh. Uh, I'm going to go with D. Because that seems like something that would have actually happened. And I feel like A is going to be some other ad, not the introductory one. Although, if it was introductory, they wouldn't show an old machine that's, like, slower, would they? Uh, I'm gonna go with A. I'm correct? That was the ad they went with? Damn. Select the correct definition of hash. A, a mark or counter added to an original file each time it is updated. B, an illegal drug made from poppy flowers. <laughs> C, a number computed from all the bytes of a file. D, a code sent out by a machine to identify itself on a network. E, potatoes and meat chopped into little cubes, sometimes served fried with eggs. So it's not B or E, because those are foods or and or drugs. Although, I don't know if those are real drugs or anything. Hash was your favorite food before you stopped eating meat? I mean, that just seems like, you know, stir fry tofu. I don't get it. Um, a mark or can counter added to an original file each time it is updated. I think that's called a version. Um, C, a number computed from all of the bytes of a file. That's a specific definition, but I would say that is that is correct. D, a code sent out by a machine to identify itself on a network. That would be address. So I think it's C. For a quarter, you'll help me next time? What? Sorry, what? Fine, wh what was it then? Hash is a combination of fucking hell. Combination of potatoes and meat chopped into little squares. All those static specks that sometimes infest your reception of a weak TV station. Hash is the visible static displayed on a terminal or a food. Those with passing knowledge of drugs may have been tricked by the illegal drug answer. Hash is a slang term for hashes, which is a refined form which is refined from the marijuana plant, not the poppy. Hash total, not hash, is a method of ensuring the accuracy of processed data. A hash table and a hash code are used to create an efficient data structure for accessing data. In these definitions, the word hash is used as an adjective, not a noun. Hash marks are these little bars found on the left sleeve of dress uniforms of soldiers and sailors. Again, hash modifies the noun bar. 
A packet includes an address to identify the source machine, but it ain't called hash. These authors are pleased with this question, aren't you? <laughs> this is too advanced. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is like being a normie that's like, well, I don't know much about computers, but I'll give it a shot. Um, okay, let's go to the next question. When you power on your IBM PC or clone, your computer's startup program looks in drive A, and if the boot program isn't there, looks in drive C. What has already happened? A. The BIOS has verified that the DOS kernel program is available in ROM. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, did DOS go in ROM? I think it did go in ROM. Maybe? Did IBM PCs put DOS in ROM? I think so. Um, they put the BIOS and some DOS in ROM, and then I guess you would install another DOS or something. Um, okay. The power on self test has checked that the core routines of DOS are available in ROM. That's not what the power on self test done, so it's not B. C. The bootstrap loader has checked internal hardware, tested memory, and verified that things are ready to run. That seems, that seems correct. D. The bootstrap loader has provided self, performed the self test to ensure things like keyboards, memory are all are available. Possibly. E. The power on self test has checked internal hardware, tested memory, and verified that things are ready to run. So, Oh, these are very specific. Okay, so let me kind of channel channel my not knowledge. Um, it wouldn't be... Okay, I don't think it would verify that the program is available in ROM. How would it do that? Um, post has checked the core routines of DOS are available in ROM. I don't think so either. Because again, how would you check that? Would you hash over the memory? Um, and again, what if what if you're on a machine that doesn't have DOS in ROM, only BIOS? C, the bootstrap loader has checked internal hardware, tested memory, and verified that things are ready to run. So bootstrap loader, that's a bit of a hand wavy term. Um, Checked internal hardware, tested memory, and verified that things are ready to run. Testing memory, yes. Maybe. I think the IBM PC does test memory. Um, has checked internal hardware. I don't know what that means. Verified that things are ready to run. I don't know. D, the bootstrap loader has performed a self-test to ensure things like keyboards, memory are available. Um, I don't think it checks for the keyboard. But it might, I don't know. But then it talks about the, the post process again. The power and self-test has checked internal hardware tested memory and verified that things are ready to run. Okay, so we have kind of two separate answers here. We have the bootstrap loader and the power on self test. I would assume that the power on self test happens before the bootstrap loader because it's loader, not testing. So it would be A or E and I think it would be E. I'm correct. Let's read the hint. The key to this question is understanding that part of the power up routine is in ROM and the rest is on the disk. The question asks what happened before your program seeks to a bootable disk. The first thing that happens is that a power on self test is performed to verify internal hardware, test memory, and determine whether essential hardware components like keyboards are available. The post is in part of the BIOS, which is stored in ROM on your motherboard. If the post is not successful, a warning will be displayed if possible. 
and a beep will be heard. If the post is successful, then the BIOS seeks a bootable disk by first looking in the A drive. If no disk is present, it looks in the C drive. If there isn't a C drive, or the C drive doesn't have a boot sector, or the disk in drive A didn't have a boot sector, the system halts and, give, and you're requested to insert a system disk. If the boot sector is found, then the bootstrap loader c commences to load the DOS kernel, ibmio.com or io.sys. That seems reasonable. The second part of the question seemed like a trick. Um, yeah. Off we go, next question. The initials RMS, oh no. Oh. The initials RMS is synonymous with an important figure in computing today. <laughs> Select the correct statement about RMS. RMS is really Ralph M. Sampson, the founder of electronic data systems, not the basketball player. RMS is really Roger Martin Sinclair, an important innovator in computer technology and builder of Sinclair ZX81. RMS is a PhD from MIT who founded the Free Software Foundation and was a major contributor to Emacs. Does he have a PhD? No, he might, he probably does. He has an honorary doctorate. D. RMS is really Robert Mel Mellon, a senior, the co-founder of Chromico. RMS is a PhD from Berkeley who founded Berkeley Software Distribution. <laughs> I feel like if, RM if RMS himself saw E and I picked E, he'd roll in his grave. Um, but no, it is, it is C. Let's read the hint to see if there's anything in it. And if it's too long, I'm going to skip it. Okay, you know what? I'll read the hints because they have a whole bunch of other stuff in it. Richard Stallman, a PhD from... I'll have to paraphrase it, okay? Because it's just too long. RMS founded the Software Foundation, Free Software Foundation, was a major contributor to Emacs and the GNU C compiler. Stallman was one of the organizations of the League for Programming Freedom and has organized protests against Ashton Tate, Apple Computer, and Lotus. Yeah, that sounds like RMS. The remaining answers are close, but inaccurate in one or two more details. The founder of Electronic Data Systems was H. Roche Perrot, not Ralph Sampson. Ralph Sampson is an, indeed a basketball player. One well-known contributor to computer science with the name Rashid is Rick Rashid. He is a PhD at Carnegie Mellon University working on Mac. Mac is a Unix-like operating system with extensions for parallel machines. So this is actually interesting because GNU later took... <laughs> I'll read that in a second. GNU later decided to use Mac as the model for the kernel um, and it didn't work out well, which is why we use Linux. Um, I think Mac's Use the Mac kernel, M-A-C-H. Um, it was an Englishman, Clive Sinclair, who brought out the incredible Sinclair ZX81 personal computer for $100 in 1982. This little computer came with a whole 2K of memory and was the cheapest computer available at the time. Okay. The inside of a PC contains, among other things, several small rectangular objects attached to different sized pieces of printed circuit board. Collectively, these small unusually rectangular objects are called CPUs, MPUs, chips, UARTs, RAMs. I would say chips. Sounds like chips to me. After that one, you deserve a soda. Okay. Let's look at the hint. Um, yeah, it tells us what stuff is. Oops. <laughs> Orc, Andrew WK is available on both Unix and MS-DOS machines. Complete the sentence. Orc is a program which allows access to specific and safe portions of the Unix or MS-DOS kernel. No. A special, cell, a, a special shell program named after its developers. Yeah, maybe. 
C, a pattern matching language should perform common data manipulation tasks. I think it's C. D, a common hackerism for this may. E, a database program which produces hashing code keys to access relational data. I think it's C, a pattern matching language for performing common data manipulation tasks because that's what it is. B, a special shell program named after its developers. Because I know Dennis Ritchie and Brian Kerningham, they worked on Unix, I think, or I know there's also Ken Thompson, but I can't see their initials in Orc. So it'd be C. I'm correct. Let's see the hint. Orc is a pattern matching language used for performing common data manipulation. It was named after three scientists at Bell Laboratories who developed it. The names are Alfreded, uh, Alfreded Aho, Aho, Peter Weinberger and Brian Kerninghand. It's a programming language um, yeah. Pretty cool. Complete the sentence. The first home computer for less than $500 was created and marketed because the magazine Pop Electronics wanted to come up with a good article on home computers. I doubt that's true. I don't think you would create a computer because a magazine wanted it to, to make an article. I don't think that's how economics work. The Mark 8, I don't know what the Mark 8 is. Commodore Pet, no. Apple One, maybe. Health Kit H80, I think it might be the Health Kit, maybe. The Mark 8, I'm not sure. Let's look at the hint. So, first computer sold for home use was a kit put out by Ed Roberts Mitt's compute company. It was developed when Pop Electronics asked its techie contributors to submit an article on building a home computer. Mitt's answered with the Altair 8800 and was consequently figured, featured in the magazine. So the Altair had to be assembled at home, was programmed in machine language. It was extremely difficult to use, but the public bought more than Mitt's could easily deliver. The Altair sold for 397. The other computers listed, except for the Heathkit H80, for which was a terminal, came later. So the H80 is a terminal. Wait, is it really A? My god. No, it wasn't. Remember the hint and you'll know the answer next time. Oh, so does that mean I got it successfully, but because I looked at the hint? Or because it was wrong? I don't know. Many companies entered the mainframe market only to later leave this market. Which of the companies below did not do this? General Electric, RCA, NCR, Singer, or Xerox? God, I don't know how to, how to handle this. Uh, which companies did not fall over during the dot-com bubble or get destroyed by IBM and Oracle and Microsoft? Uh, I just don't know. Let's look at the hint. Harris and NCR are still live and making computers. Um, Xerox was, so the other ones, RCA, General Electric, and Xerox all entered the mainframe market and tried to compete with IBM. Xerox was the maker of the Sigma 7 computer. Um, so let's look around. Da, da, da. So I guess it's NCR. Hope you got loads of neat information in the hint. So yeah, it's it's roasting me for using the hint. Complete the sentence. Recursive programming is A, not limited by the size of the program stack. <laughs> Definitely not true. Unless you're using tail call recursion. B, is generally a less memory intensive method of implementing algorithms. Ah, your mileage may vary. 
C, cannot solve any problem that cannot be solved with a non-recursive algorithm. I, I, D is supported by COBOL. And E allows for the solution of programs like the Towers of Hanoi, which could not be solved using non-recursive methods. I don't know if that's true either. It might be. See, the thing is that, like, I'm sure you could make some kind of Towers of Hanoi program that's done using, uh, like, some kind of a state machine or something. Although, is that true? Are there problems that can only be solved using recursion? And problems that can be only solved with non-recursive algorithms? I've never thought of that, but I've always assumed that um, both were not isomorphic, but definitely able to do what the other one can. And when you think about it, recursion is just, um, you can kind of think of it as a stack of stuff, I guess. Um, that's not specifically. All right. Uh, I'm going to do D or maybe not D. Why would COBOL not have D? I'm going to say D. That's wrong. COBOL doesn't have recursion. Are you kidding me? All right, let's look at the hint. While any solution that is solved recursively can be written non-recursively, I thought that was true, the ease of expressions of numerous problems is why most modern structured languages support recursion. Examples of languages which support recursion include C, Pascal, Ada, Modula 2, and Scheme. Basic has some level of recursion in that a Go sub can call itself Recursion is not supported in COBOL and Fortran 77. Recursion levels are limited by the size of the program stack. Since each recursive function call requires extra memory, those problems can once we solve for often. Those problems once solved are often recoded non-recursively to save memory for final production releases. So the answer was C, because A is false. Like it's not, it is limited by the stack. B is true too. It's false true. It's false too. D is false. E is false. So C is false and C is cannot solve any problem that cannot be solved with a non-recursive algorithm. Shit. If you, if you remove the cannot to logically negate this, it, C says recursion can solve any problem that, that can be solved with non-recursive algorithm, which is what I thought was true. This, this game is ruining me. Oh. Complete the sentence. The, le the letters G-I-G-O refer to goes in, goes out. The geographic information group order. The bylaws of the geographic information group. The quality of your work is related to the validity of the data used. D prefix for million, million. E prefix for million. So G-I-G-O, I'm pretty sure means garbage in, garbage out. And it refers to the idea of that, like, no matter how correct your code is, um, like, it applies to mathematics too, or anything. If you give a bad input, then you're going to get a bad output. So, like, um, if you write a program that can perfectly calculate the orbits of the planets, and then you put the moon in, like, the wrong position... Your program works fine, but you've just given it garbage as an input, and so you're going to get garbage as an output, and that can become a big headache. So it's going to be C.
let's check the hint to see if it says garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. GIGO stands for garbage in, garbage out. It basically means that if one feeds bad input to a computer program, one will receive bad output. While GIGO may have other meanings, this is the most well known in the computer discipline. I believe that's true. What is OSI? Um, an acronym of Organization of Systems, a non-proprietary network protocol supported by the International Organization for Standardization, an acronym for Operating Systems Interchange, an acronym for Operation Software Integrity, an acronym for Open Software Interface. Uh, so the thing that immediately makes me think is how it's re related to the OSI, o, um, o, OSI stack. Um, so like uh, the OSI stack. So I think it would be operating systems interchange, although... Uh, it could be open software interface. You know what, foot down, I'm going to say it's, it's C. It's wrong. It's wrong. Open Systems Interconnection. It's a networking protocol that has been established by the International Organization for Standardization and International Electromechanic, Electrotechnical Committee. It is an attempt to define a standard networking protocol that all users on all computers can have access to. It has not been successful as the internet protocol, but then again, it doesn't have DARPA to support it. It just has the ISO slash IEC to support it. ISO OSI protocol, like the internet protocol, is a non-proprietary protocol, which means it can be freely distributed in the hope that it will link computers of different hardware together. Um... That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. You want to play Angband? No. So I didn't know there was an like alternate OSI networking protocol. Let's quickly uh, escape out and just search up OSI protocol. I've always known about the OSI stack. The protocols originally conceived for the model did not gain popularity. Interesting. So they have connectionless network service, connectionless network protocol, connection oriented stuff. So that's pretty cool. I've never known about that. Okay, back we go. I hit enter. Yeah, enter. Do you want to play another game? Not really, no. Oh, I'm in DOSBox. Ooh. Did I crash the page by going exit? No. Um, I don't want to do any more quizzes. I'll die. Let's look at simulation. Do they have anything cool? Big death? What? No. Yes, maybe. Random game. Uh, probably not that. Probably not that. That's too gamey. A lot of these are games. I don't want games. I want, uh... Well, I'm at dosgames.com, I guess. Oh, we got Jazz Jackrabbit again? Sure, whatever. Simulation slash strategy. I guess there's puzzle. 2048. No alpha man. 
I feel like a puzzle would break my head. Simulation slash strategy. Game trade educational. Here we go. Beat the bomb. Uh, that would kill my head. All of these would kill my head. Christmas matchup. Cindy's lemonade stand. Are we going to run a lemonade stand? Oh, you don't actually run one. Um, Digibrain. Donald Duck's Playground. What? Who's Donald Duck? Funny face. <laughs> Crazy Christmas letter attack. Logo is pretty cool. Let's go back in. Is there a tag for programming? AT Robots. You can write your own robots using a game like C. Uh, let's have a look at some of these. I've thought about playing a um, playing a programming game before. Um, Core War Plus. Um, I'm not going to look at Core War today. But I don't want to write programs either. I guess we'll have a bit of a look at Core War. Sea robots, maybe? AT robots. Let's do a little bit of Core War. No, I'm trying to find the tag on Twitch if it does have this. Core War. Okay, we'll just use that. Alright, so I have played a little bit of Core War before. Load reg let's load let's load Gemini.red. Install programs at random. And then it loads it there. Then I guess we're going to dump core. Oh, we need run. F2 is run. So Gemini just does things diagonally, I guess. So let's try and beat Gemini. Does escape cancel it? Okay, yeah, I don't... It's going to be a bit of a headache. So let's load a red code program. Does this have an editor? Oh, this thing... It's not going to grab. Okay, uh, if this does, if this doesn't have an oh F five for new monitor run. So not being able to do escape is a bit tricky. Let's try view red code for um, Gemini. Okay, um, that seems like hell. I think there's a Core War for Linux though. Let's just search up in the software center. It's not finding them, no.
I guess we're not going to be playing this one. Um, let's look at game creation systems. Or let's search Core War. Yeah. Core War. See if there's anything interesting in game creation systems. Oh, Megazix. I think there was an open source sequel to that. I think it was called Zix. Not Zix. Zix ICO. Is it weird that whenever I see crypto coins using like names, I just immediately think, oh, you've trashed the namespace. So let's see, ZZ, ZZT. Um, is there like an open source version of ZZT? Oh, someone reconstructed the source code of ZZT with permission and released it as MIT. It's nice. Open source ZZT. So there's Dream ZZT, Direct ZZT, Zoo64, Dream ZZT. There's a lot of ZZT stuff. Was I thinking of um, Zix? Mega Zix. Is that on GitHub? Oh, it is. Okay. Let's look at Megazix. Let's download this. There better be a Linux version. There's freaking not. Can I just play it? Oh. Can I play it online? Oh, maybe I can just click on a game and play it? Yeah, okay. Let's find a game for it. Uh, gold collection. Um, what? Best rated games? I don't know anything about this. I think that's it for me today. Um, I'm going to click random just one more time. And if there's anything interesting, I'll play it. Okay, another time. Nope, that's all. All right, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for joining my DOS stuff. See you next week. Goodbye.